Today, let's talk about paralyzing actions in Home Assistant. Whoa, what does this actually mean? In your automations, you have triggers, actions, and conditions. Today, we're zooming into the actions part of your automations. Within actions, you can have multiple actions. And by default, those multiple actions run sequentially. That means that one action starts when the other one completes. But in Home Assistant, you can do parallelized actions. In this video, I'm gonna show you how, but first, let's roll the intro. This is an example of an automation with two actions in parallel. To add actions in parallel, click add action and click run in parallel. Now here you can say there's a new section that says run zero actions in parallel. So you have to click add actions within the box. This one over here, not this one. So we're gonna turn on a light. I can collapse this, I can add another action. So I've added a switch call service and we have two actions running in parallel, two actions running in parallel over here. Now, how this actually works is quite interesting. This is a sequential pattern with parallel patterns inside. So the easy way to understand it is to collapse this automation. If I open this automation here, this first block and the second block, those two will run in sequence. So first Home Assistant is gonna execute in parallel these two actions, and then afterwards it's gonna execute in parallel these two actions. So that's how you can combine sequential actioning and parallel actioning together. You can also do something different where you can have things running in parallel and then it, within the parallel runs have sequential actions. So let me just delete this example that I gave you and going back to a more simple example. So we have this lamp over here, which you can see is currently turned on. The first action is gonna turn the lamp red and the second one here turns the lamp to this bluish color. Technically, we don't really know which color the lamp is gonna turn out. Home Assistant is triggering both of these call services. The information is traveling back to my Hue bridge and then it travels back via Zigbee to this device and that's how it turns on. So if I turn this off by just using the button and now I'm gonna go three dots and run the automation. And you can see, I think it did a bit of a blip. Now let's see what happens when we do some similar automation, but we use a sequential mode. So here we have the sequential automation. So you can see it's pretty much all the same. We don't have this parallel box all around the actions. So I'm gonna go and turn this off again by hard pressing the lamp, so it's off. And just to recap on the colors, uh, the blue in this case is the first color, and the second color is red. So the way sequential should work is that this should turn blue first and then should go to red. So I might need to put this on a slow motion in video editing if this is, doesn't come through, but I'm gonna do it now, three, two, one, run. Okay, so I didn't see it with my eyes, I didn't see it going to a different color, but the end result was that it went red. So my first impressions of using parallel versus sequential it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. Digging deeper, but let me tell you about a few things to be aware of about parallelized actions. There's actually no order guarantee in which things can happen with parallel runs. So we, you really, if you really need to ensure that one thing happens before something else, then stick to sequential mode. If one of the action fails or there's an error on one of the parallel branch, the other one will actually continue doing its thing. Okay, so in a sequential mode, if something breaks at the top, then the automations on underneath or the actions, the, sub the sequential actions afterwards will not work. And if you've got variables within the context, they're not shareable across the other sections of the parallel run. So you can't like reuse or reference things from different parallel blocks. So let's now do another demo and see if we can s notice some difference. So I've got this lantern here. It has a Philips Hue candle inside. We've got our lamp again here. So if you could probably can't see in the shot, I'll just keep it, keep it like this. So I'm gonna be changing the automation to use the lantern. All lights are now off. So we're ready to test this out. We're gonna test the sequential run first to see if we can spot a difference between one of the two lights turning on before the other. Probably there was a subtle difference there. 
but technically this turned on before the lantern turned on. Let's rewatch it in slow motion and see if there's actually a difference. Now let's change the parallel automation to use these again. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one, run. Okay, so those really looked instantaneous. Both looked to be exactly the same, but we're gonna compare these to the parallel run and the sequential run in slow motion to see if there was any difference between these two devices. Run. Now, if this video was valuable and informative to you, remember to give me a like and subscribe to the channel for more Home Assistant tips. You can watch this next Home Assistant tutorial over here. I'll see you in the next one. This was Geo from Smart Home Makers. Ciao.